Good morning. Good morning to those of you out there and those of you still online. I tell you what, this is my first week back with having people in the sanctuary, and uh, I, it's great. It's awesome to be able to be here together. And uh, I'll tell you what, it was really weird when we were just doing online only uh, to be singing up here in the worship people know too, and you're out, and just out there, there's nobody. You know, it's everybody's online. Uh, but it's good to be able to be back. Um, and uh, I've been gone for two weeks, one week on vacation. Last week, not feeling so well. Feeling great today. So uh, uh, it's good to be back with you. And it's good to be able to just uh, come together to worship, uh, to know that no matter what is going on in America or the world, that God is in control and he loves each and every one of us. And he sent Jesus Christ for us. And uh, you'll know as we start singing, just what's been on my mind just this past week with everything that's happened. And um, one thing we know for sure is people need the Lord. There's no doubt about that when we see everything that goes on. Uh, so let's go ahead and prepare to worship this morning. I got to get used to saying stand and sit again. So let's all stand together <laughs> as uh, I'm going to share with you scripture from John chapter 8 verse 12. And then we're going to be singing together. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. We need the light of Jesus Christ. There's a call comes ringing. John 16, 33 says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Hear our cry, Lord, we pray. Our face is down, our hands are raised. You called us up. We turned away, we turned away. With shipwrecked faith, the idols rise. We do what is right in our own eyes. Our children now will pay the price. We need your light, Lord, shine your light. Lord, it's now. We 
are desperate for your hand. We're reaching out. We're reaching out. All our hearts, all our strength, with all our minds, we're at your feet. May your kingdom come in our hearts and let the church arise, let the church arise, if we ever needed you, Lord, it's now, Lord, it's now, we are desperate for your hand, we're reaching now, we're reaching now. Thank you for this time that we have together. Father, we know that we need you. Father, each and every day. And Father, I'm thankful that you're there. Help us to reach lost souls, Lord. And I thank you for this time that we have together to worship freely, to lift up our voices in praise and prayer to you. And Father, to hear your word opened up. Father, thank you for your son for the gift he gave when he gave his life. Now he conquered death as he rose again. And Father, I give you glory, honor, and praise this morning. In Jesus' precious name, amen. You can be seated. Let's continue to worship together. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Jesus for the cleansing power. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each 
soul cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansions bright and be washed in the blood of the Lamb? stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the So I'm really doing something weird today, and that's actually I'm using two electronic devices. And that is very weird for me, because something's going to happen. Something's going to mess up. I do have backup. I have the songs still in hard copy form. <laughs> Why is that? Because it's just my um, experience. Something happens when I'm using all electronic. Now, I think it's all, it's usually user um, yeah, it's my fault. It's, but when we see uh, of all the advances that we have, uh, everything we're able to do, and then I think about, you know, things that's happened in the last week, and I pray each and every day for our law enforcement, the rioting, the looting, violence, vandalism. That's not what God wants. And you can tell by the song selections, I've been thinking about that a lot this week. And I really like how Scripture ends in Revelation. Revelation 22, 20, and 21. He who testifies to these things says, Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. Yes, I am coming soon. And there's a part of me that says, please come. Please come now, Lord. But then I think about everything going on and how many people need the Lord, and we can see that <clears throat> so well. And we're here as followers of Christ, as believers in Christ. We're here to show lost souls Jesus. Obviously, some don't know him, as we can tell. You know, Jesus himself tells us <clears throat> in Matthew, Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything. I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Jesus tells us to go. And I know we've heard that. We're disciples making disciples. But there's no better time than the present to share Jesus with others. We serve a risen Savior. Romans 6, 8, and 9. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. Jesus Christ has risen. He's alive today. He's up in heaven, sitting at the right hand of God. But you know, if he has risen, then he had to die first. And he did that. He did that because he loved each and every one of us and each and everyone out in the world. 
And that's what we celebrate or we remember when we come to this time of communion. So I want to leave you with this before you partake. It's actually, I was in John a lot this week. It's actually from John. It's actually when Jesus died. So I'll leave you with that. From John chapter 19, 28 through 30. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head, and gave up his spirit. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for that gift that Jesus loved us so much that he was willing to give his life to bridge that gap between us and you so that we may have hope of eternal life. Father, I pray that you bless the emblems that we'll be partaking this morning. Bless the bread that represents Jesus' body that was bruised, that was whipped, that was beaten for us. And bless the juice that represents his blood that flowed for us. Father, thank you that each and every week we can remember, and I pray each and every day we remember what you did in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to continue to worship. As, as I've said, we do not serve a dead Savior. We serve a living one. And he is our living hope. So let's stand together as we sing that. <clears throat> that lay between us how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night then through the darkness your loving kindness tore through the shadow is finished the end is written Jesus Christ my living hope who could imagine so great a mercy what heart could fathom such boundless grace the God of Step down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever. Jesus Christ. Salvation in your name.
said? Amen. You can be seated. Good morning. morning. I might sound like a broken record to some of the youth group kids here, uh, but this has kind of come up uh, in a lot of ways here lately. Questions we ask ourselves has been on my heart and at the front of my mind over the past few weeks. Kevin used a question-based format for last week's outline. The curriculum we're using for youth group is based on questions that God asked us. And I've been asking myself questions and writing them down privately regarding the turmoil in our country right now. I've not posted any of these questions publicly because I don't really want to go there. I don't want to make enemies at both ends of the spectrum. That's not my goal to ask myself questions and look for godly answers. With all this talk of questions, though, I've, I've tried to put it into practice. I found it's a little easier to ask ourselves questions about other people's lives than our own. I showed two properties yesterday. One was valued over 600000 the other was about a million. As you walk through places like this, you find yourself asking questions about the owners. Wow, how did they afford this? I wonder where they got all this. Why'd why'd they spend their time and effort and money on this or that? I wonder where they're going to go from here. These questions were easier because I was removed from the situation. I had no pride or guilt behind each answer. I could consider the questions and possible answers at face value because it's not my life. But at some point, you have to come home. I look at my home and my life and my blessings, and I'm reminded of that song from my front porch looking in. I ask myself the same questions, and lo and behold, they seem to relate directly to offering time. Wow, where did all this come from? Why did I spend my time and effort and money on this or that? And where am I going from here? I think it's up to us to see godly answers and godly perspective to each of these questions. I know I use this verse a lot, especially at offering time, but I think it actually answers the first question, where did all this come from, and it gives us perspective. The earth is the Lord's, oh sorry, Psalm 24, 1 and 2. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. As we consider the other two questions of 
why we have poured into the things that we've poured into, or where do we go from here, I think this is more of a personal matter. But again, in the Zoom youth meetings, we've been going over Genesis chapter 3, Genesis chapters 1 and 3, and the questions that come out of that. I think it helps. I'm not going to go into all of it, but if we look at Adam and Eve, and we put ourselves in their shoes, or their lack of shoes, we see that God provided them everything and gave them dominion over everything. They had it all. What they had was even better than any of the million dollar spaces that I saw yesterday that humans have tried to recreate. It's ironic that a lot of these really nice homes have nice gardens. But they didn't ask themselves the right questions. They forgot where it all came from. And they believed statements and suggestive questions from a serpent possessed by the devil. We have many individual blessings and many, many blessings as a congregation. As we consider all of this at offering time, let's remember where it all comes from and carefully consider the provider's purpose for all of it. In 1 Corinthians 10, 26, Paul reminds us of this same verse that I shared in Psalm 24, for the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. But he follows it in verses 31 through 33 with with some disciple-making guidance. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. Do not cause anyone to stumble, whether Jews, Greeks, or the church of God. For I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, so that they may be saved. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. God, thank you for the blessings you've put in our life. God, thank you for this church. God, we pray that uh, each place we find ourselves uh, in, in our life, whether it be at home or right here in front of this offering table, God, that we consider how we can take what you've given us and spread your message of love and truth with it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I don't think you need me to instruct you on how to pray uh, this morning. We're just going to take some time individually, and I will just certainly encourage you to be praying about what's on your heart and mind, and we'll just uh, offer this up to the Lord. So let's take some time to pray, and then I'll close. Heavenly Father, once again, we are mindful of uh, the stillness of the moment and just the awesomeness of your power and your ability your grace. We are certainly aware of great difficulties in our nation and even around the world, and there are so many who do stand in need. We know that you have perfect answers. We know that you have a purpose and a plan, and we know how many times we fail to see those or we don't wait long enough uh, to see your plan unfold, and we pray that we would Just continue to be strengthened by coming to you, whether it's uh, individually in our own study and reading and prayer, whether it's um, online, in person, uh, at home, uh, church building, at work, in the car. Father, we pray that we would be filled with your mercy and grace and that we would be able to share that with those uh, in our homes, in our neighborhoods, our communities, our nation, this world. We pray that we would be your voice, your hands, uh, your feet, and your heart this week. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. <clears throat> and we, have, we, we talked about the voices last week. Um, I am sure you have heard many again this week. Uh, they, if you will, they are still at it. Um, I am still at it. We're, we're all talking. I'm not saying everybody should be quiet. Right? We need to be talking. But there are always those voices. There, 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 there are some voices in the world that would have you believe that every law enforcement person is racist. Um, there are other voices that would suggest every word any leader says is hateful. Um, some will give the impression that every sneeze is deadly. You know, I mean, you, you just we're, we're engaged. You have every day we sift and sort and listen and read, and that's that's a question: Are you reading? 
specifically the Bible, am I reading? And we stated this very simple truth last week. I just should listen to what God says. Okay, fine. Am I doing that? Do I know what God says? So we want to do, I want to do that together as a church family this summer during, during these morning sermon times. We'll spend these three summer months looking at, talking about things Jesus said. And we will use these, at, these are the building blocks. These are foundational statements all through. And it doesn't matter if you're away on vacation for a week or two, uh, you won't get lost in the series. You can come back, catch up. And it's, it's, these all stand alone. You know, there are a lot of people out there questioning, why, why do you think that? Why did, why did you say that? Uh, why, why do you believe that? So we're going to ask for the summer. What did Jesus say? Some of these are, are basic guiding principles. Uh, we'll look specifically at things that Jesus said in co- individual conversations during the month of June, and then things that he said in parable teachings in July, and then things that he said like in mass gatherings, if you will, in August. I don't think there's any better place to start. If you're going to talk about the words of Jesus, John 3.16. Uh, one of the most beloved, well-known. It's one of the most signed pages in my Bible. That I have a study Bible, and I think I left it out there on the table. If you haven't signed your name there and would like to, you can pick any page. And, and when I use that Bible, when I come to that page, I try to pray for those people. I, you can ba- barely read it. Hannah's look. I don't know how old Hannah was when she wrote that, but not as old as she is now, we'll say. <laughs> but I love it. That's just uh, Clint's on that page. I think Lauren's there. You know, just I pray for those people. No. And I would appreciate it if you say it with me. I think I'm going to have Hunter put the NIV on the wall. So let's just recite this together. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. A lot of people know the verse. And, and you may, this group, you may be familiar with the, the context, uh, the setting. This verse comes out of a conversation that Jesus is having with a man named Nicodemus. Uh, a preacher named Zach Kincaid wrote this background. The hour is late. The streets are dark in Jerusalem. There's a warm summer breeze that cuts into the lingering heat from the day. Why is this night any different from any other? For one man it will be. Can you see him? He's winding through the streets with a torch in hand, walking with a particular purpose. He arrives at the house where he thinks Jesus is, and he knocks on the door. The, the last several days have raised many questions. Nicodemus carries the weight of his doubt and his fears through the door to see if this Jesus really holds the answers. He saw John at the Jordan, and he heard rumors about the sky opening when Jesus went down into the water. He knows the marketplace is full of whispers about miraculous acts and challenges to traditional Jewish teaching. The world seems upside down because of this Galilean, this rabbi, this unique person who claims to be the son of God. And Zach goes on, he says, if you look at John 3.16 in context, you see that Nicodemus comes that night with some faith. He has some questions. He says, Rabbi, We know that you are a teacher come from God, this is verse 2, and that no one could do the signs you do unless God is with him. So it's this conversation that leads us to John 3.16. So if you have your Bible open to John 3, it's page 887 uh, in the Pew Bibles. But you can see, especially if you have words in red, the first two statements that Jesus makes in the conversation, they both start with the same words, I tell you the truth. And the truth is, John 3.16 has become so beloved because it's such a simple summary. What, what's in there? This, this is the heart of the gospel message in one verse. Where does it start? From God. That, that's the beginning. The verse says, <clears throat> for God. Okay? It, it is God who has initiated this. And he is not another person that you can just force to resign because they sin. He's not somebody you can fire because they made a mistake. He's not somebody you can unfollow because they made a poor choice or used a word you don't... No, nobody is going to cancel God. I think we're a little bit susceptible to thinking that the world has to abide by my wishes. And this message from John 3.16 is, is from God. 
And if you study the Greek, the original, the word for God in the Greek is theos, not thanos. <laughs> and it's, it's a big difference. Okay? And I don't, I don't know if there's like some Marvel movie fans out there, they think God is thanos, this powerful, glove-wearing immortal who wants to snap his fingers and destroy half the universe. So if we band together, get enough superheroes, and we take his magic glove off, we'll be able to stop him. And if our initial efforts fail, then we'll just regroup in the sequel and try again. I don't want to spoil too much of the movie, but you know, that's fic just a reminder, okay, that, that's fiction. There, there is a whole universe of, of movies and comics out there to explain how all the Thanos stuff works. That's not how any of the Theos stuff works. You know, I, there are some people who are laboring under the false impression that they have the final word. They have the, the last say. You know, be, be true to yourself. That's very politically correct. The Bible speaks reverently of a different authority. God. Theos. Yahweh. Jehovah. You know, at, at the end of this account, the Bible, there is a judgment. The dead are judged. All of us. Every, every human being who's ever lived. Revelation 20, 12. And I saw the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Another book was opened, which is the book of life. The dead were judged according to what they had done as recorded in the books. Who's doing the standing? We are. We are being judged. Who's seated on the throne of judgment? God. This is from God. It is for everyone. So I, I think some people see God as mercenary or, or heartless, like you just can't wait to sit on a throne and look and go, okay, you, heaven, you, hell, next. You know, that's, um, that's, that's not the whole of God's character. Th this offer from Almighty God is available to whom? Whoever, King James, whoso, whosoever. And in the context, right, the conversation, he's talking to Nicodemus. He's talking to a Jewish man, a ruler, a leader, um, authority. He, he's representative of the old system. He's poster child for what was first century privilege. You know? And much of what Jesus is sharing is like the old is about to be replaced by the new, and that ruffled some of those guys' feathers. And Nicodemus wants to hear it, and the door is open to him. Jesus, this is for you. In the next chapter, I think we're going to look at the Samaritan woman conversation next week. She's at the opposite end of their political spectrum, cultural spectrum. Uh, Jesus will talk to a Gentile official. He will talk to um, crippled man, who, whoever. Can, can you think of any text in the Bible where Jesus says, oh, no, my offer's not for them? There's, there's none of those. No? And sometimes people read this and go, oh, Nicodemus, he's cowardly coming at night. You know, whatever the circumstance, he, he's willing to engage in the conversation. I don't know how long it would take you to read this interaction, probably two or three minutes, but they probably talked for a long time, maybe hours into the night. You know, we're aware of that, right? Conversations can be pivotal. I, I need to be willing to talk. I think the greatest contribution I can make to the public conversation these days is to say, for God so loved the world. That's everyone. I think this image, uh, Laura Zilke took it. I think it's a good reminder. You know, if, if you want to see who God is offering salvation to, it's these people. You know, whosoever. Again, if you look at the original, it's a simple word, pas, P-A-S, all, each, every, one of the whole. And anybody who's willing to believe in him. And what does Jesus say in the very next, our verse 17? For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. And Peter echoed that, echoed that 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. I don't know that, I, sometimes I feel like some people think we as Christians are on a mission to pick people off and just whittle down the waiting line for heaven. You know, it's like, like we don't have to wait as long. Um, heaven's not a theme park. Okay? It's a great park and it's probably a lot of fun. You know, but I'm, I'm not worried about crowds. I'm not concerned that I won't have enough time to do what I want to do. I, in my mind, it's more like the most beautiful national park 
in the world, and there's plenty of space, which got me thinking, what's the biggest park? And you may know this, and I don't know if I pronounce it correctly, Wrangell St. Elias, it's in Alaska. 13.2 million acres. The park is the same size as Yellowstone National Park and Yosemite and Switzerland combined. <laughs> okay. It's a big park. Okay. Now, how much space are you going to need? Really? And, and you've all, I don't know if you ever asked this question, you know, seven, how many billion people? How much space if we were all together? Wait, but why says you could fit all these people in the one building? And they, that's their superimposed image in downtown Manhattan. Now, it's a big building, but still. You can put them all there. National Geographic said we could all stand, everybody in the world could stand shoulder to shoulder in the confines of Los Angeles. And Cora says if everybody got a square meter of space, we would all fit in one-fifth of Maine, the state. And you can, I know that's just people today, you can factor in the, I think it's 98 billion people that have lived before us, plenty of room, okay, for everybody. No one is automatically excluded. Everybody in the world, for God loved it, the world, and the pandemic has rightly kind of drawn our focus temporarily to home and, and family, and now protests and riots open our eyes again to, to national and American issues. Um, the wall in our lobby out there, you know, this verse, God has always had what as his focus, as his target? The whole world, everybody, and this is a little quiz for, for some of our longer term people, Really for everybody, because it's in the announcements. And Hunter, we'll just kind of work through these together. But who are these people and where do they serve? Who, can you see the guy in the tan shirt? Lazarus Fish. You can put his name up there. And where does he serve? Myanmar. Myanmar Burma. Good. Who's the next one? And she serves in? Very good. Who's the next couple? Jim and Karen Eda Wolsifer. And they serve in? Italy. Now, this one's kind of a curveball. Who are the people? Where do they serve now, right now? Tennessee. Tennessee. Yeah. Where were they prior to Tennessee? Spain. Where were they prior to Spain? I should walk this way. Yeah, Ecuador. Exactly. Very excellent. You know? Now, and some of, some of us have been to, maybe been to Haiti, uh, Spain, elsewhere on a mission trip. Um, maybe, maybe you've gone to Europe on vacation. You know? um, Maybe you've been to China for business. I don't know. I, I know our country has a numerous needs at the moment, but the whole world has a need for the gospel. And where did Jesus send his disciples? Mark 16, 15. He said to them, go into all the world and preach the good news to all creation. This is from God. It is for everyone. It is rooted in giving. For God so loved the world that he gave. God is not paying us back for services rendered. He is not settling up something out of obligation. He gave. A lot of people say, I want to be like God. You want to be like God? You give like God. And sometimes we judge love by how much we give. You know? How many carrots are in that engagement ring? <laughs> I was like, carrots? You're talking like whole carrots? I deal in fractions. <laughs> you know, like it's a half or a third or a quarter, you know. Uh, somebody say I gave X amount to church financially. Um, I think we're going to need to put some time and effort in. We're very aware that um, Lifeline feeds a lot of people outside of Haiti, um, Honduras specifically. You know, we need to help. Get, we need help for vacation Bible school and time and video. Uh, people give. We give to parents. You give to children. You give to your spouse. H how much did God love? So much so that He initiated. And, and we just mentioned Genesis. You'll hear several things that Mark said. <laughs> I'm about to say. Genesis 3.15. And, and I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head, and you will strike his heel. I don't know if that's in Stephen's lesson, but you know, we're, these things are connected. Genesis 3. That's poetic. That's prophetic language. It's, it's early on. But again, what's the setting? Adam and Eve and, and the serpent and we no sooner drop the ball, sin enters the world, and God is initiating. God says, I got a plan. And, and, and think about whatever trouble spot in your life you want to pick in your mind. Are you waiting? Well, I don't, I don't want to risk rejection. I don't want to be the one that loses. I certainly don't want any more pain. I'll wait. I will wait for them to commit. I'll give back. 
I'll love them like they love me. And the two sides just keep dancing around like this. You know, God loves so much, he went first. He says, I, lo I love you. He'll say it to anybody. He didn't care if they say it back or not. So much that he gave his son, for God so loved the world, he gave his one and only son to the cross. The death will be on the cross um, Jesus has just referenced that with Nicodemus in verse 14 and 15. They had lifted up a bronze snake on a cross shape, and so the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. You know, this is a very easy question to ask. It's incredibly difficult to think about, but who do you love so much you would allow your child to die in their place? You know, from God for everyone. It's rooted in giving, and it results in eternity. And, and to be specific, it results in eternity in heaven. Eternity is a given, but eternity in heaven. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life in heaven. Whoever accepts Jesus enters heaven forever. And, and you got to take a minute because talk about perishing. What does it mean to not perish? Does that, does that mean I won't die? No, because we all know Christian people who have died. Um, I'm going to die a physical death, but not perish. A contemporary English Bible has never really die. The original there is lose, destroy, disappear. 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it's the power of God. You've you got to be careful. You can't tip that too far. People are going to say, yes, yeah, so heaven's fine for you, but people who don't go to heaven will just be annihilated, cease to exist. They won't know. That, that's not biblical either. Okay? Scripture describes an awareness of hell, an agony in hell. These are words from Jesus in Mark chapter 9, 47. And it starts with the word hell. He's describing it. Where their worm does not die. And the fire is not quenched. And Jesus has a, a parable in Luke 16 about the rich man and Lazarus, and the rich man winds up in hell. And he's fully aware of agony. And he's aware that heaven is different. That's, that's precisely what John 3.16 is attempting to prevent, that that would ever happen to anybody. Have eternal life. It'd be a great life. Great. I don't know if anybody's weary of anything in recent days. And suicide is always a legitimate concern. We have to be aware you have to be mindful. Try to provide aid. You know? And even when I'm not maybe to that point yet, you, know, you, you can certainly wish things were a little better than they are. It could be any day this week. Anger, violence, pain, death. <laughs> and Mark already flipped to the exact same words that I was going to say. People turn to the end of the Bible, and you read those words, you say, Amen, come Lord Jesus. And if that doesn't happen today, then, then verse 21 that he read, the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. I, know, I don't want to hasten death. Um, I, I have to live out my days in service. And I've taught, maybe you have too, especially like older people sometimes, and they'll flat out say, I don't know why the Lord is keeping me here. No. But apparently he has some more work for me to accomplish. That, that's Paul speaking to the Philippians in chapter 1, verse 21. For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I'm to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me, yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. But it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith. And, and there are some people who are listening to this, whether it's in the room or, or online, I know you're ready to go. And some days we're more ready even than others. But for today, I stay and I work. I make as many disciples as I can. No. Now, having said that, I have no problem talking about where we're going to go, <laughs> what we anticipate. Uh, like, I, I don't know if anybody's getting married anytime soon. Um, you ever talk about that? <laughs> kind of excited? Um, I don't know if I, I don't. I really don't know if anybody's expecting a baby, uh, maybe a, a grandchild. You know, first grandchild. Anybody ever talk about stuff like that? Get excited? Anybody ready to leave for vacation? <laughs> yes. Please finish the sermon so we can move on. <laughs> you know, that's. Fair enough. You know, I would want to talk about that. I, I, in Revelation 21, 22, I could read that every week, not get tired of that. 
No. I love talking about good news. When, when you guys work and serve and pour out and I get wind of something, I, I love to talk about that. I have a screenshot of Galena Young from the 2020 news story. You know, it's just ironic. I didn't try to mark her, but the little play button's right on her forehead. <laughs> you know, so there she is. You know, but that's <clears throat> there, there's nothing wrong at all with hearing good stories. You know? And I'm going to read Revelation 21:2. And this is the scripture that I purposely did not put on the screen because I just want you to close your eyes and picture it, especially if you've seen any videos of cities in recent days. Revelation 21:2 says this: I saw the holy city. The new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Now the dwelling of God is with men, and he will live with them, they will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And the river of life that John sees in Revelation 22, 1, then the angel showed me the river of the water of life as clear as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb down the middle of the great street of the city. On each side of the river stood the tree of life, bearing 12 crops of fruit, yielding its fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. The healing the nations. Unity together, one. I, I could read passages like this every Sunday. Revelation 7, 9. After this I looked, and there before me was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, tribe, people, and language. Standing before the throne and in front of them. Not standing there in judgment anymore. That's done. Standing there in praise. The nation. It's for the nations. If people would only listen, if they'd accept that. And there are some people out there that get so angry. Oh, you Christians, you don't, you're head in the clouds, pie in the sky, never pay attention. No. Did you listen as I was reading? This is exactly what you people are out there looking for. Equality, protection, peace. Oh, I, I, would, I would love to make this place heaven on earth. But the reality is heaven is heaven. You know, and, and we're trying to make this temporary home as close as possible. For God so loved the world. God, God loves everybody so much that he wants all of us to be with him for all of eternity. Now, he is not going to force this. You don't want to be there, you can opt out. Satan's already demonstrated that as an eternal career path if you want to choose that. You know, if it sounds good, if you want to accept it, God's done his part. He has so loved the invitation is ours. Believe, stand here, confess him, be immersed. Let's close with the verse. Say the verse again with me and we'll close. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Let's pray. Father God, we are grateful for your truth. It has uh, withstood the ages, the test of time, the trials and the failings of mankind. Uh, Father, we know that there is hope. We know there is strength. We pray that we would be constantly anchored in your word and able to share that with your grace. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. <clears throat> and we will Again, encourage you. We'll invite you. Let's stand together as we prepare to sing our invitation. We'll stand and sing the song softly and tenderly. And we'll close. <clears throat> this is the time. If you don't know Jesus as your Savior, you can know him today. He'll meet you where you are. Just need to come forward, confess him, believe, confess, water's ready. So if you need to do that, don't let another day go by, softly and tenderly.
should we tarry when Jesus is pleading? Pleading for you and for me. Why should we linger and he not his mercies? Mercies for you and for me. Come home, come home, you who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, oh sinner, come home. Time is now. from you and from me. Shadows are gathering, death's night is coming, coming for you and for me. Come home, come home, you who are weary, tenderly Jesus is calling calling oh sinner come home oh for the wonderful love he has promised promised for you and for me though we have sinned he has mercy pardon for you and for me. Come home, come home, you who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling Again, we're glad that you can be here with us. It's just always, every week just get some more people back and it just feels a little bit back to normal. And we do want to have a, just a quick um, Vacation Bible School staff meeting. There's been a team of people that have already been working on some of that. Can we just go in the young adults class straight across over there? There's enough space there for chairs in a circle. So we'll meet there briefly for a little bit. I don't, is there anything else that may have some good thing of? Let's go ahead and we'll pray and close. Father God, thank you for today. Uh, thank you for this time. May it strengthen and nourish and energize and renew us uh, for the days ahead. May we continue to be conscious, um, aware of our words, our efforts. Uh, may they be yours. Uh, may we share your love. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. We'll close with singing, People Need the Lord. People need the Lord.